Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and today I'm going to get a bit messy, which is why I've covered my work surface in white paper, so the boys behind the scenes don't moan at me for wrecking their furniture. I'm going to show you how to do a really easy and really quite satisfying splotchy watercolour ink technique. And uh, I've got some, I'm lucky enough, I've got some gold and silver ink, which really lifts the design off the page. And you can use it to make covers for tiny books. You can make gift tags. And greetings cards. And what you can do with your leftover pieces is you can just cut little flowers from them. So I'm going to finish that card later. But I'm going to get started with showing you the important part, which is basically chucking water around. Now, I've got some acrylic paper here and I've got some watercolour paper. I say paper, it is actually board. And I would recommend that you use quite a thick, I mean, I think this is about 230 gram board, because you're going to make it wet. And if you just use watercolour paper or ordinary bond or even, you know, your ordinary cardstock that you would use, it will make it warp. This is slightly warped, but nowhere near to the degree as when I actually use paper. So pop your piece down there, grab yourself a water spray, and just spray it with some water, and then just take a wide brush and dampen that surface. Now the other thing I found as well actually is if you dampen the other side of the card, is it does reduce the amount of bend because what happens is the fibres in the paper increase that they both expand. It's the expansion of the fibres in the paper that make it bend. Um, let's go with a nice blue design here and we'll take a very pale blue wash colour ink to start with. Just drop a little bit in your paint palette, add some extra water to it and stroke it across the page. Might need a little bit of extra, extra water. And try and work in the same direction. A little bit more ink there. Sadly, my nice wide brush is too wide to actually fit in the top of the bottle. But if you give it a shake, there's always a bit left in the lid. I'm then going to swap to a more of a turquoise tealy blue. And this is a more concentrated colour, so I am going to add quite a lot more water to that in the palette before I start using it. A lovely colour, but very dark. And you literally, you just need, it's almost like stenciling, you need to tamp some of that ink off before you stroke it on. And we're just going to put a bit of lilac in there as well. If I can find my lilac. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush oh, to do this lilac. It would help if I actually dip the brush fully in the ink. And I'm going to let some drops of lilac fall on there. I'm going to spritz the whole thing again to make sure it's nice and wet. <gasps> Nearly knocked that over. Oh, that'd have been so cross. And I'm just going to use a dark purple. But again, I'm going to spritz this because I really want this colour to spread. And I'd quite like it to run. Now 
So to be honest, I mean, even if you've only got a couple of colours of ink, you can mix your colours and then you can dilute them to get various different shades. So if you've got a nice dark shade, but you want to lighten it up a bit, just do it with water. So I'm going to blot that because it's too wet for me at the minute now. But you can see very little ink has actually come off on that blotting paper because it's soaked into the watercolour paper that I've used. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to this. Again, with that whole spotting technique. And this white ink is, is undiluted, completely undiluted. So it will actually stay on there as a different colour. Just make it a little bit wetter. And then the pièce de résistance is the gold. And you need your gold to be fairly dilute, otherwise it won't come off the brush. As you can see, I said about making a mess. Don't wear your favourite clothes on this. Because that ink, the vast majority does go on the paper. The rest of it goes all over you. So there you go. Now I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to come back in a minute and show you how to make these tags. And there'll be some templates in the description below for you to download to make your own tags. So see you in a minute. Click here to see the next part of the video.